Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss further into approximate integration and look at example two of the example series. And now we'll basically go over this one, which states how large should we take n in order to guarantee that the trapezoidal and midpoint approximations are accurate within a point zero 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 one for the following integral right here which is the same one we dealt with uh, earlier, which is integral from 1 to 2 of 1 divided by x dx. And again, this n, that's just the number of intervals in the approximation, so make sure to watch my earlier videos to get uh, caught up on that. And now to basically uh, recap on, or I'll just go recall the, the error bound methods for basically yeah, both the trapezoidal and midpoint rules, what we have is f double prime of x absolute value is less than or equal to a number k in yeah for basically x is less than or equal to b less than or equal to a where those are the bounds in this case we have one and two then for the trapezoidal error we have absolute value is less than or equal to k times b minus a cubed over this one is 12 n squared and for the midpoint rule we have absolute value of em is less than or equal to uh, k and then b minus a cubed and this is 24 n squared and again this is just less than or equal to one half of the absolute value of e t or the trapezoidal this is just 24 that's 12 it's only difference and in our example basically yeah, our example right here the a equals two, well, A equals to one, and B equals to two. That's just these upper and lower bounds right there. And now if we look at the first derivative, or let's just write f of x. So the f of x is the integrand, in this case it's one over x. And then which equals to also, uh, this equals to x power of negative one. Let's rewrite it better for taking derivative. So the the derivative f prime of x equals two, bring this negative one down, and becomes x negative two, which equals to negative x squared, well, one over negative one over x squared. And now we have the second derivative equals to bring this negative two down, that cancels, becomes positive two, and then this becomes uh, x three, which equals to two over x. Three. So this is the second derivative, and now when we look at these upper and lower bounds, what we have is uh, 2 over x3. This is less than or equal to, well, when you plug in 1, it's less than, I mean, it's greater than when you plug in 2. So this is uh, 2 over 1 cubed, which equals to 2, and it's greater than or equal to when you plug in the other one. Yeah, the uh, 2 over, now we plug in the 2 here. 2 cubed. This is just 2 over 8 or 1 over 4. So 2 cubed is 8. So again, this is the largest value inside this interval. Thus, we can choose uh, the largest value or the smallest k value we can choose, which is 2, because that's the largest k, I mean, largest second derivative value in this interval. So choose k equals to 2. And, and this follows that, well, it's greater than or equal to the second derivative f uh, of yeah f double prime of x yeah for the interval one is less than or equal to x less than or equal to two so this is just for completeness sake writing all this so we choose this because that's the smallest that we can again this is absolute value and again choosing the lowest value of k that we can is uh, we get a better accuracy because we put it to infinity and then that just means our error well is less than infinity which doesn't mean much so now the accuracy within point zero 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 one means that basically the size of the error should be less than point zero 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 one thus for the trapezoidal rule we have n we choose n such that e t the absolute value is less than uh, 0 0.0001 so if it's less than this value then this means that this value well this is greater than we're choosing it greater than the k times it by uh, b minus a cubed over 12 and squared which equals 2 in this case this is going to be k is 2 b is well 2 minus 1 
2 minus 1 cubed over 12 and squared. This just becomes, well, 1 cubed, which is just 1. The 2 divided by 12, that becomes 1 over 6 and squared. So bringing this together, we have 0 0.0001 is greater than or equal to 1 over 6 times n squared. Now we can multiply n squared on both sides to get it out and divide by 0 0.0001 on both sides to get that out. So what we get is n squared is greater than 1 over 6 times 0 0.0001. And then this becomes n, when that, then just square root this out. So n is greater than 1 over square root, and multiply this inside, 0 0.0006. And again, we ignore the minus sign, because when you square root uh, both sides, it could be plus or minus, but n in this case, well, it makes no sense if it's negative, so we stick with positive. And now this equals 2 when you plug this into the calculator. Yeah, like I have right here, we're using Google cal Google calculators. 1 divided by square root 0 0.0006. We get uh, 40.82. So this is roughly equal to 40.8. And again, so what we choose then, because n is greater than this, we choose, and it has to be a, f a whole number, um, choose n equals to 41. Now, an important note, uh, basically from my earlier videos on the air bounds and their proofs, uh, it, it is shown that it's basically quite possible to choose a lower value of n and still be within the given accuracy. But in this case, choosing n to be 41 is actually the smallest value uh, to guarantee that the accuracy is within 0 0.0001. So more likely than not, we can make it less than this and still be uh, uh, accurate within 0 0.001, but there's no way of guaranteeing that. Meaning we wouldn't be 100% sure. Uh, but this is, uh, but 41 is basically the smallest value to guarantee that you'll always be within 0 0.0001. And you can see my proof videos, which are pretty extensive, to see why. So now for the midpoint rule, we choose n such that, well, this is the same thing, but now we use the other formula. Absolute value of m is less than 0 0.0001, which this means that 0 0.0001 has to be, well, greater than, yeah, the right-hand side of the formula, which was k, so k, and then there's, again, there's the uh, 2 minus 1 cubed, now it's over 24 n squared. And this equals 2, These, that's just 1, so we ignore 2 over 24 is 1 over 12 n squared. Similarly, now we have 0 0.0001 greater than equal, yeah, just greater than 12 n squared. Move this around, rearrange it, 12, two, I mean 2, I mean n squared, or n to the power of 2 is greater than 1 divided by 12 times 0, make this better, point. 0, 0, 0, 1. And now, uh, square rooting it, we get n is greater than square root times this inside, we get 0 0.0012, which is roughly equal to, when you plug into the calculator, let's move this here, I already had it here, so 28.86, uh, uh, or I'll just round it up to, to 9. So this is roughly 28.9, so what this means is, well, we choose n, it has to be a whole number, uh, n equals to 29, or I'll just write choose n equals to 29. And now this is the n29 is less than the 41, so 12 times less than the, I mean 12 intervals less than the uh, trapezoid rule for the same accuracy. So this basically further shows that the midpoint rule is, well, most often than not, more accurate than the trapezoidal rule. This also shows that, well, for very, very large numbers of n, when we need to use supercomputers for it, we can save computing power by using the midpoint rule for whatever accuracy we're doing, or for trying to calculate pi to a trillion digits, etc. So this is just a, a small glimpse of the kind of problems those when you deal with supercomputers and high uh, high complexity math, uh, you would try to have obviously minimize all errors, and this is a good glimpse of what they kind of do. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you learned from this uh, pretty useful example, and like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.